Hello and welcome back. I'm Dr. Barbara O'Neill and today we are diving into the world of anti-aging. If you're interested in maintaining your youth and vitality, this information is crucial for you. Aging is a natural process, but there are ways to slow it down and even improve your health as you get older. Research has shown that certain foods and exercises can have a significant impact on how we age. By incorporating these into your daily routine, you can support your body's ability to stay strong, energetic and youthful. So stay tuned to discover practical tips and strategies to help you look and feel your best at any age. So what I want to show you, I want to show you how the high intensity interval training can give a reversal of the process we saw earlier. What I didn't tell you earlier was that this is a very fast pathway. And this one is a very slow pathway. But as you're sitting right now, these pathways are feeding quite nicely into each other. But when you're running for your life with the 30 seconds high intensity, if you don't think 30 seconds is very long, try it. When you're running for your life, it seems forever. So let's say we're getting to the end of our first set of 30 seconds high intensity. It's early morning, which is the best time to exercise. Don't exercise after you've eaten because most of your, your energies is going to your stomach. And if you exercise then, the body's going to try and pull some of the energy that should be digesting down to your muscles and you're going to get a little bit of a war there. Best time is early morning, especially if you've had a good night's sleep, especially if you are well hydrated, which is vital to be able to release these little glycogen stores. So we're, we're to the end of our first set of high intensity. We need fuel. And so what the body does is it plucks those little glucose molecules and feeds it down the energy pathways. Plucks another one, feeds it down. Plucks another one, feeds it down. That's where we get the energy. That's how I had the energy to run up the hill this morning. By their probably third set of high intensity, the glycogen stores have run out. What's the body going to do now? It's got more, fuel, more stores, there's more fuel, there's more fuel in storage. Here it is over here. The most amazing fuel depot in the human body are the fat cells. And because the body's needing that fuel, the pituitary gland releases the human growth hormone. The human growth hormone is active while we're growing. It's probably not a surprise to you that I haven't grown since I was 16. <laughs> My son William grew two inches from 19 to 22. Boys can often be growing a lot later. Once we stop growing, the human growth hormone goes into retirement until it's called upon. So when we're doing the high intensity interval training, we basically are causing a bit of a crisis on the body. We, we need help. So the human growth hormone is activated. When the human growth hormone is activated, it releases hormone sensitive lipase. Hormone sensitive lipase is an enzyme that breaks down fat. When we look at fats and how they're digested in another lecture, we will see that sublingual lipase breaks down saturated fat and pancreatic lipase from the pancreas breaks down polyunsaturated fats. This lipase breaks down our fat stores. The human growth hormone causes a release of hormone sensitive lipase, which allows these fat stores to be released. The human growth hormone stops burning glucose as fuel and becomes a fat burner. The reason for this is that glucose, it runs at four calories per gram. Whereas fat, it runs at nine calories per gram. Now this information is in psychedelic colors in every weight loss book as the reason why we should stop the fat 
if we want to lose weight. You've probably heard that theory. But what they don't understand is what a calorie is. A calorie is a unit of energy. So if you want a high energy food, what do you eat? Fat. Dr. Robert Atkins, he blew calorie counting to the wind. He showed very clearly that you can have a two and a half thousand calorie a day diet that is all carbohydrate and you can put on weight. And you can have a two and a half thousand calorie a day diet that is predominantly fiber, uh, proteins and fats and you can lose weight because there's calories and there's calories. We also looked at how, how the brain loves fat as fuel because look, fat's going to give more than twice the units of energy that glucose will give. The body's preference for fat as a fuel source during high intensity interval training is a remarkable aspect of our metabolic flexibility. When the glycogen stores are depleted, the body efficiently switches to burning fat, tapping into the more substantial energy reserves stored in adipose tissue. This metabolic switch is crucial for endurance and sustained energy levels during prolonged physical activity. The role of human growth hormone HGH extends beyond just mobilizing fat stores. HGH also supports muscle repair and growth, which is essential after the micro tears and stress placed on muscles during high intensity workouts. This hormone's ability to enhance recovery and promote lean muscle mass is another reason why HIIT is highly effective for improving overall fitness and body composition. The release of hormone-sensitive lipase triggered by HGH breaks down triglycerides in fat cells into free fatty acids and glycerol, making them available for energy production. This process not only aids in fat loss, but also helps in maintaining lean muscle mass, a key factor in long-term weight management and metabolic health. Age cheese. What's the blue in the blue vein cheese? The blue in the blue vein cheese is mold. So the only cheeses that don't sit under that category, the cheeses that have probably a pH of seven would be your fresh. So that's your uh, cottage, your uh, ricotta. I'm not saying that they are okay because usually they come from cows who have not been fed right or have chemicals in them. But on the pH scale, they're not as, as acid. Caffeine, all your caffeine foods and drinks have an acid effect. And of course, caffeine usually comes hand in hand with the sugar, which certainly ups it. And remember our 2.6 Coca-Cola, that's a combination of the caffeine and the sugar. Did you know that Coca-Cola is called Coca-Cola? Because I think it was in the early part of the, the 20th century, they put they put cocaine in it <laughs> and then they went over to caffeine which is just as dangerous. Alcohol is not a food but it creates an acid environment in the body. Tobacco is not a food but it also creates an acid environment in the body. All your other grains, other than the grains that sit on the alkaline side. All your other legumes, other than the lima, lentil and soy. And all your other nuts, other than the almond and Brazil, have an acid effect. To maintain the 6.5 environment, we need to be consuming 20% acid forming foods and 80%, 70 to 80% alkaline forming foods. And I'm sure you're not surprised to hear me say that the 20% should come from this section here. <laughs> yes, oatmeal is here. Yes, rice is here. They're not bad grains. We need a little acid. Yes, your chickpeas are here and your garbanzos, your, chi your chickpeas, your black-eyed beans, your kidney beans. They're not bad. Of course they're not bad. We need a little acid. It's when the whole meal is acid that tips the scales. How many 
How many Americans would be eating 90% acid, 10% alkaline? Is that true? No wonder cancer and heart disease are neck to neck for the number one killers in the world today. Far more people die from alcohol related diseases. Far more people die from tobacco related diseases. And yet they're not banning tobacco or alcohol, are they? That's why the deaths to COVID fade into insignificance against all of these. That's why God gave us a sound mind to assess these things. Are you familiar with the hydrangea plant? The hydrangea plant's a beautiful big bush and it has big flowers about this big and each flower is made up of actually a whole lot of tiny little flowers. And sometimes you'll see a hydrangea plant with blue flowers, sometimes purple flowers, sometimes hot pink flowers, sometimes pale pink flowers. They're not different types of hydrangea plant. The gardener plays with the pH of the soil because different pHs create different colored flowers. There's a massage house in the town near us. Well, it's an hour away. We're from an hour from a town. And it's an old house that's been painted purple. And out the front, they've got big hydrangea plants. And the purple is the same color as the paint that painted the house. I'm wondering how long it took them to play with the pH of the soil just to get the, just to get the right color. Just as the gardener plays with the pH of the soil to get the right color flower, you can play with the pH of your soil, I mean cell, to create different health and sicknesses conditions in the body. One of the easiest ways to do it is eat more vegetables, eat more greens, start pursuing the other grains. And little by little, without your family even realizing it, you be can begin to create an alkaline environment in your family. When you go home, remember that everyone's going to be a little bit afraid of you because you've just been to a health retreat for a week and they, they're going to think that you're going to knock them over the head with health. You know, the best thing to do is to say very little and just create the most beautiful food. The pH balance of our body plays a crucial role in overall health, influencing everything from digestion to disease prevention. It's true that many foods and drinks contribute to acidity in the body, which can disrupt this balance. While blue vein cheese and other cheeses with a lower pH can be delicious, their mold content and acidity might not align with a balanced diet aimed at reducing acid levels. Blue vein cheese and caffeine can speed up the aging process in different ways. Blue vein cheese is high in saturated fats and sodium, which can lead to high blood pressure and heart disease. This puts extra strain on the cardiovascular system, contributing to premature aging. The high salt content can cause water retention and dehydration, affecting skin elasticity and leading to wrinkles. Caffeine, commonly found in coffee and tea, can dehydrate the body and disrupt sleep patterns. Poor sleep and dehydration can make the skin look tired and less youthful. Over time, the combined effects of these substances can make the signs of aging appear more quickly. So it's important to eat adequate protein. It's important not to drink with your meals. If you drink with your meals, you water down the digestive juices that break down your protein. We're going to look at this in detail when we, when we study the gut. So we need to be eating adequate protein. We need to be drinking between our meals and not with our meals. But also implementing the high intensity interval training causes a release of the human growth hormone which increases the body's ability to break down protein. The human growth hormone also increases the circulation of the blood to the skin. This slows down aging. This slows down the wrinkles. <laughs> This also ensures blood supply to the extremities. I'm surprised at how many people, especially women, have cold feet. I said, don't, don't let your feet get cold. One lady, she said, oh, my feet are always cold. She does not exercise. When you exercise, 
you increase the circulation of the blood to the extremities and absolutely to the skin. The movie stars pay $1,000 a week for the human growth hormone because their, their profession, their, their work is dependent on them looking good. Well, I'm offering it to your cut price today. Only 15 minutes high intensity interval training a day will cause a release of the human growth hormone and you will receive all the benefits. That human growth hormone remains active for 24 hours. That's a bargain. So when the human growth hormone is released, then the fat stores start getting used. So remember what I said, we've got a reversal of this process. So ideally, when we eat breakfast like a king and lunch like a queen, when we eat a lower carbohydrate diet and have high fiber, generous proteins and healthy fats, and go to bed with an empty stomach, then we get up in the morning and do our high intensity interval training, using up all our glycogen stores and maybe a few of our fat stores. When we eat our breakfast, all we're doing is replacing the glycogen stores and, the, and the, there's no excess glucose to go over to fat stores. It's the most powerful weight loss program. We had a man do our program and his name was Lee. And he said to me, I am very intrigued by this because he said, I used to be obese. So I, I'm going to give it to you in kilos. I know kilos. I know pounds are almost double. So he was, uh, let's say, I'm 50 kilos, which would be about 100 pounds. So what he was was 150 kilo. That's almost 300 pounds. He said, I was obese. He said, living the good life, too much wine, <laughs> too many big meals at night. He said, I realise that. I'm a businessman. He went... He went to the doctor and the doctor said, you, you gotta, you got to go on meds. Your blood sugars are getting too high. Your blood pressure is getting too high. Lee said, look, I, I'd, rather, I'd rather try it naturally with lifestyle first. So the doctor said, well, you've got to stop the fat. Remember this theory we've been looking at, this fat phobia? Now, the paleo diet and the FODMAT diet and the keto diet, they're certainly doing a lot to... to uh, to dispel this fat phobia. But there's still a little bit around and his doctor had it. See, doctors don't study nutrition. Some doctors know nutrition and it's usually because they've done their own research. So he said he wasn't eating much fat. He stopped, stopped the last of it. He said he went back to the doctor three months later and he'd lost two kilos, four pounds. That, that's not much when you're 300 pounds. <laughs> Doc said, no, nah, it's not working. We've got to put you on the meds. Lee said, give me one last try. So he went home and he Googled. He Googled effective weight loss strategies. And he found the paleo diet. He found the keto diet. He went into the archives and found the Atkins diet. He said it sounded extreme, but he, he thought, I've got nothing to lose. So he got his carbohydrate level right down. He started to eat a lot more vegetables. He was having the meats, butters, creams, cheese, eggs, and he implemented an exercise program. He said he was amazed at how the weight was just coming off him. You can see why. He's not having a lot of carbohydrates. So every meal, he was not putting the weight back here because he had a low carbohydrate diet. And every day with his exercise, he's eating away at the fat stores. And even when he wasn't exercising, because he wasn't giving his body a lot of carbohydrates, whenever he even did brain work or anything that required energies, his fat stores are getting broken down. He was excited. By ensuring we consume adequate protein, we support muscle growth and cellular function, which are vital for maintaining strength and energy as we age. Drinking water between meals rather than during them helps optimize digestion and nutrient absorption, ensuring that the protein we consume is fully utilized. Adopting a balanced diet rich in proteins, healthy fats and fibers alongside regular HIIT, we can create a sustainable weight loss and health maintenance plan.
Remember, starting the day with a nutrient-dense breakfast after a session of HIIT can help manage glycogen levels effectively, reducing the likelihood of excess fat storage. This holistic approach to health, combining diet, exercise and strategic eating patterns, offers a natural and effective way to stay fit, energetic and youthful. Thank you for watching today's lecture on anti-aging foods and exercises. I hope you found the information helpful and are excited to incorporate these tips into your daily routine. Remember, the key to aging gracefully lies in a balanced approach. If you enjoyed this lecture, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more health tips and advice on living your best life at any age. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below.